Hi, Mish here, and we were out at the cabin kind of doing some final checks, ironically, including paint swatches. And this is something folks had asked how it runs. I already did a pretty in depth video. This is the DS Arms, Dave Slovakia's recreation of a Fabric National 5063. Actually, a 5062 if you want to get exact. Paratrooper with the 18 inch barrel, not the 17 and quarter. Folding Stocker, Holland rear sight. Yeah, again, did a full video. And a few folks weren't sure if DSA was still doing. Yeah, these latch stocks are always a lot of fun. This is how the originals are. These are forged receivers. So, yeah, they even did a replica of the original S. 15 serial. That was pretty cool. Non carry handle cut. And these paratroopers are interesting because of the recoil system. Of course, 762 NATO. With that, we're just going to run a few mags through it. Not going to be a long video, but really curious to see how this 2024 production DS Arms FAL or FAL if you prefer runs. Here are the two pouches I brought. Typically, most FAO pouches do hold two of the mags. There are a couple that hold three or more, but yeah, come on, with the uh, 762 Netto's weight and what have you, got to be practical. And as always, if you could, please do like, share, and subscribe. And if you really could help support somewhat on Patreon, it would help us A, pay for more 762 Netto ammo, because it's like a buck around now. And B, actually get some steel out to the range. But this video is just function testing. And I brought a tool just in case. Because I learned my lesson last time. I'm just going to do a couple of rounds test fire with the factory mag. Held open. And that was with the default gas setting, which seems to be about midway. These later style regulators, even with FN guns, were not numbered. All right, we'll keep on. Hey, what do you know? First rattle out of the box, and it worked. Even held open. That's not always the case with guns, especially some 6 tornadoes. But that's what this tool is. This was my gas adjuster. I've got a couple of different ones of these. And um, sometimes with the gas regulator... You can do it by hand if it's not too hot, but oftentimes when guns are new, they're maybe too tight, or when they're old and they have carbon buildup, this does not spin freely. It's just a good idea to have this little tool. And the reason the FAL's gas system is so adjustable, FN knew that quite a wide range of nations could be deploying these, and thus quite a wide range and, frankly, quality level of ammunition. So... It was meant to be kind of dialed in for the ammo your service was using and then left there. All right, let's try more. That was a different mag, same type, just different mag. Held opening. Pretty clean. And I had a few more rounds in that second mag too, but of course, those are brand new, or at least new old stock. How about random mags? And it's not even just about function, it could be fitment. So those were the DSA provided mags. And I just grabbed one of my surplus mags. Alrighty. Three for three on mags, and I really don't feel like the gas system Needs much adjustment, so don't really need this. And I even brought out one of my other guns. I decided this one was good, since it has the same barrel length, but it's a fixed stalker. Just in case, as a control. This is something I almost always do when I'm test firing a new gun. Bring out a similar gun in the same caliber, hopefully even using the same mags. So, if there are issues, I can kind of troubleshoot right there in the field but it actually looks like so far we may not need this one 
So you might be wondering why this seems like I'm being so cautious. Well, for one, when I'm testing a gun, I do try to be prepared. But for another, well, last time. A year and a half ago, Fox had commented he had never fired an FAL and really wanted to. And I debated what would be a good one to start with. And I thought, well, this would be, obviously. Pre-ban, full length, so no issues there. I described one mag and went to the range. Argentine FAL. Oops, had a jam. Not surprised. And as it happens, probably because of tolerance stacking, that mag didn't fit the gun too well. I was able to get it in, but yeah, that's what happens when you have a mag that's either bad, bad feed lips, or just a worn out spring. Or sometimes you can have a mag that works perfectly good in one gun, but fits just a little eh in another. So I did find one more mag and went to test it. Yeah, even. And even worse, and now I was suspecting that day, the gas was not set right. Okay, no problem. Like with this one, I can turn it by hand. I could not turn this one by hand then. It is a pre-ban, so it probably hadn't been adjusted in Lord knows how long, and it was kind of softly frozen in place. I did not have my adjustment tool, and while I probably could have used something, again, pre-ban, I really didn't want to scuff this up more than I had to, plus a storm was rolling in that day. So unfortunately, because of my lack of preparedness, Fox was not able to shoot FAL. So this time, I was determined not to make the same mistake twice. And while Fox was not with us this time, Jero was. And I've often said it's kind of fun handing him, or Fox, guns they've never had experience with to see how quick they could catch on. Because it kind of gives an idea of how a novice would. However, Jero is not a novice with FNFALs. In fact, it was his father, who I call Doc, who introduced me to not only the FAL itself, but also how to build one literally in your garage. My first two FALs, I built in his garage with his help. And, of course, by extension, j Row too, grew up with FALs because his father purchased his first one in the uh, mid to late 80s. So he has some experience. However, his father never has had a paratrooper. His were all fixed stock guns similar to this. In fact, I was the first one to put a paratrooper in his hands, and it was actually a DSA back about 20 years ago. It was one that they assembled using an STG-58 kit on one of their receivers with a shortened 16-inch barrel. And I remember the first time that uh, I let Doc shoot it at the range. So with that, even though j Rose never had any experience with this exact variant, he knows what's up with FN FALs. Now I figured I'd let j Row try with another surplus mag. Nice. So four different mags and doing well. All of them went in just fine. All of them even held the bolt open. So it really looks like I did not need to pack my good old Congo. But better safe than sorry and always be prepared. That's what I say. But let's hear what j -Row says. Let's hear what he thinks about this para. His first experience with an FAL folder. And since he kind of grew up either shooting home-built guns from kits or pre-ban rifles, I recall his father has a uh, Israeli, for example, as a pre-ban. Yeah. So thoughts? Uh, it's clean. I like it a lot. Um, I'm, you know, never hugely a fan of any kind of, you know, folding stock paratrooper thing on something as punchy as a 308. <laughs> uh, but, I mean, honestly... 
I've been beat around a lot worse. Yeah, you have. No, it's 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 comfortable. It, uh, you know, I mean, with the paratrooper configuration, it's it's a little tempting to sort of ride the hand, you know, back here a little bit. And I mean, let's face it, FALs were never really. It, this isn't exactly a mag dump kind of gun. I mean, you can. No. But, you know, it's generally speaking meant to be fired from a more stabilized position. This is a good point to talk about a couple of things. Looking at the Congo and looking at this, you'll notice the sling swivel is further forward and the barrel is a little different. And, of course, the handguard is too, although this style of handguard is not very common. And that kind of addresses Jero's comment about being designed to be fired from kind of a more stable or fixed position, quite a few FAL variants are so-called bipod cut. Not all. And the early bipods, like on the SGG-58 and the G1, were basically staked in place with screws. But later ones, like on this RG, are disconnect. So you can clamp them on, and they were options in the 80s. Now you have to have both the bipod cut barrel and the bipod cut handguards. Of course, you could put this style of handguard on a gun like this, but the barrel also has to be cut. So if you have both of those, you can install the bipod. And it's relatively stable. It's not a bad bipod. It really isn't. So that would give you that fixed firing position. And um, actually, the Argentine military used them to decent effect in the Falklands that way. And so this isn't the most comfortable shooting stance, but, uh, you know, you might have seen I had my hand kind of back here by the mag just to kind of get it hugged in a little tighter. Started to get a little roasty toasty here yeah. behind the handguard. So, uh, uh, but no, overall, it's a great shoot, very clean, good mechanics. Um, you know, didn't feel kachunky at all. I like it. As to J. Rose comment that the FAL really isn't a mag dump kind of gun in like a more conventional assault rifle or submachine gun style, he's absolutely correct. And while some military FALs did have a three-position selector, like the issued Argentinian ones, more than you might think were limited to safe, single shot, i.e. semi-automatic only. And as it happens, two of the most widespread examples are also two of my favorite FALs. The Israeli light barrel, Romat, and the British L1A1 SLR. In fact, SLR is literally self-loading rifle. The version issued by Britain, Canada, Australia had a two-position selector. Now you might notice there is a third notch over here, which you cannot push the selector over to it. That's because they thought, well, just in case an armorer could change the internal parts and then it could select over. What Australia would use would be the L2A1. Canada would have the C2 and C2A1 as well as a variant called the C1A1D, but I digress. But Britain ironically wouldn't even use a heavy barrel version of the FAL. They would actually have an updated version of the Bren gun called the L4. Now with ours we have some internal changes to make it ATF compliant, of course, and the selector itself has this little lip on it, so it can't rotate past either way, even though it still actually has a little notch there, too. Israel had a little bit of different technique, though. Their row mat actually had a stop on the top of the switch, so it couldn't rotate further up. Interestingly, middle was safe, for an Israeli FAL, down would have been semi and up automatic. And this is how it is on their heavy barrel Macleon. But for their Romat light barrel, they pretty much figured soldiers would just need single shot. Keep in mind, both Israel and Britain were moving away from bolt actions with usually 5 or 10 round magazines to the 20 round self loader so it still felt like an improvement and of course 762 by 51 has essentially the same range penetration and power as 30-06 and is more powerful than 303 
So I just thought I'd point that out that the FAO is actually particularly well suited for the U.S. civilian semi automatic market because military versions were semi automatic themselves. Yeah. Nice. All right, guys, well, that was four different mags. Now, yeah, not a lot of shots, I know, but look at the cost of 7.62, and we're just kind of out here stealing a few minutes of time. But I wanted to see how it worked, and it worked. I was actually pretty impressed with how smooth a lot of paras, if they're a little stiff because you have three springs all nested together, they can be a little sticky. But no, this is not bad. The handle folds up nice and tight. The stock, nice tight lockup, and you know this is not a heavy gun for a 308. Even though the DSA has the 18 inch barrel and my pre ban FMAP 5063 has the 17 and a quarter, you can definitely tell the DSA is lighter. As I mentioned in the first video, this has an FN 5064 style aluminium alloy lower, whereas this has a steel lower. And while the front ends virtually weigh the same, this Argentina is a couple of ounces lighter, maybe. It's definitely made up for it here. In fact, I weighed them on the scale and it was uh, several ounces difference. So yeah, it, 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 it shows. On the other hand, there's not really much more, if any, felt recoil. And this is a smooth gun. They both charge, but I notice the bolt unlocking is a little tougher on the Argentine. The DSA is a much smoother thing. The DSA handle is maybe slightly, yeah, there's a, I'd say there's a stronger spring in the pre band here. The DSA is fine, but it's got a little bit of that to it. This one doesn't. And you can tell the stocks, the Argentine and the DSA, because it's an FN, has that hole. By the way, that hole, it is for a sling. If you look at 80s, late 70s style FN slings, some of them at least have an HK style kind of snap ring clip thing, and that will fit in this hole. But you don't find that hole on Argentine or Imbel or South African folding stocks. Of course, it could be drilled in. It's nothing fancy. But I have to admit, this DS Arms gun feels better. That extra weight does matter. In most every other way, they're identical. Although, you know, having three quarters of an inch more barrel can only help when it comes to 7.6 tornado of course since their sights are the same the sight radius is identical what have you they're both on forged type 3 receivers although ironically the original fn 5063 was on a cast type 3 receiver it really isn't this is uh about as felt as I would want a gun in 7.62 NATO. It really is. I will say too, behind, the the sound is fine. Off to the side, this uh, muzzle brake device, you can. Uh, it's definitely louder when you're sitting off to the side from it. Oh yeah, man. I was going. I was going just about deaf standing off next to you, but behind it, it wasn't yeah. bad at all. I feel like we could knock it down again. I just went with the factory gas setting, but I feel like we could actually close up that port too. Two notches. I don't want to get it too light because, again, these paras, based on just how they're made, they they are prone. Any of them, FN included, to short stroking, just because you you're you have a recoil system that was meant to be all the way back here, all compacted right here. So that's the thing. But no, uh, for a para, it's as pleasant, frankly, as they get, aside from it being hot. But that's kind of more our fault than the gun's fault. Well, that and you know this south in summer but yeah that was a uh, not just successful but actually quite fun test firing 
Those who know the channel know what a sling on a rifle means to me. I installed this one provisionally after the initial table talk review and examination. Because I quite literally had an FAL shaped hole in my collection. I've been wanting one more for a number of years now, but I've just not quite found the right one. But I thought that that could be it. But people generally like DSAs, but there were a few commenters that said they were having trouble or had had trouble in the past with theirs. So I thought, I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to reserve judgment and see how it does at the range. After all, while I do have uh, three guns built on DSM's forged receivers, they were all custom home builds. I don't own a factory gun. So after shooting and examining and also getting JRO's take, what do I think? Yeah, I kind of think so. It's still a little bit provisional. I was kind of hoping to fill that slot with a South African R1 build, but I just can't find a kit that meets my standards. And, well, I kind of have the major variations. And even an R1 wouldn't look all that different from my 5000 or even my Congo. And I only have the one para. And even though they're very similar, I really do like that this one is on an alloy. I like that it's got the little bit longer barrel. You can see them here side by side. And I like that it is American made, but it has more of an FN style to it than the Argentine because that means I can save wear and tear on the pre ban and just shoot this. And because these are relatively limited edition, it wouldn't be the worst investment in the world, but this would be a shooter grade. I think. And the price seems fair to me. And I do like the serial number. And it was a lot of fun. We just didn't have any issues at all, which is more than I can say for a lot of FALs. Usually, especially with builds, there's a little bit of a uh, Tuning in, tweaking, or finding the right ammo, finding the right mags, but this was one of the most unpicky, unfussy FNN, FN FAL experiences I've had in a long time. Even my Israeli, which has always been reliable, is kind of fussy on the mags. I'd say one third of my metric mags just don't want to fit it or fit too tight. Maybe because I wasn't expecting it or looking for it and it just kind of stumbled into me. But, uh, call me impressed. But that's my opinion. And you've heard J-Rose. I'm curious, what is yours? What has your experience been with DS Arms? Do you like fixed stocks? Or do you like paratroopers? What do you think about barrel length? Would you want the full 21? Or maybe you want 16-inch carbine, or even shorter. Let me know. And as always, please like, share, and subscribe. And I would ask if you could, only if you could, only if it wouldn't be an imposition, consider going over and donating on Patreon. Because seriously, the, the ammo cost is getting pretty crazy. Everything is bought here, nothing is donated. And I really would like to get some steel put up at the range. You can check out that over there. But if you can't, understand completely. But if you can, it would be greatly appreciated. And in turn, We'll try to do more shooting and reviews. And uh, I would say every dime donated on Patreon goes to range, but truth is I kick in a lot of my own kind of personal fun money to make it happen. And I'm happy to do so because, going to be honest, I'd be shooting it either way. But when you guys donate, I try to at least bring half the guns that Patreons are curious about and the other half kind of mind that I just enjoy shooting. With that, this is Misha. Catch you very soon next time. You know, there is another hole here. I bet an R1 would still fit there.
Hmm.